The Florida Maquis has not done a video regarding Antarctica in quite some time. With other things taking precedence, it just kind of got put to the back burner. But there are still some unanswered questions about things that were uncovered during that investigation last fall and into winter. And in this video, I would like to maybe push that ball down the field a little bit further and see if we can maybe put our heads together and figure something out. There was one structure in particular that struck me as very strange for just being, quote-unquote, an artifact of the uh, Google Map system, the Google Earth Pro. Over here, and of course, just real quick, I always refer to this part up here by the tip of South America as 12 o'clock, of course, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. Down here, pointing to about 8 o'clock, there is this odd line, and that's just the, the best way to put it, not the red one here, the cable structure, but this other one that draws itself straight directly into the center of the continent. And right where it comes out, we have, of course, found these strangely, perfectly rectangularly shaped islands. We've covered this before. But I had to ask myself a question, why? If this truly were a uh, structure that somebody created, why? What would its point be? And why here? Why would it uh, be necessary to have that type of access, this perfect cut right into the center part of the continent? And I don't know what got me thinking about it, but the limestone caves in Missouri are something that a lot of people are aware of, but I don't think they're aware of to the extent that they've seen how big they are. There's over 14 million square feet down there. I think 6 million is rented and there's 8 million available for expansion. It's, of course, in Kansas City, Missouri. And when you look at Kansas City, Missouri on a map of the United States, if you were going to throw a reticle right over our country, and try to just hit dead center, these limestone caves would be it. Just to the uh, northeast of Kansas City, Missouri, if you zoom out, it's called Subtropolis, and I'll let you go ahead and look that up and, and do all the, the detail work on that. It's not really the point, it's that it's where. For some reason, these caves where our government has chosen to um, find a spot for its... Uh, safety and well-being were if there was some type of a disaster dead center of our continent as well or at least our country i should say not the continent so a strange correlation there but it kind of gets better too because when you look at pardon me on that see if i can get this to cooperate here all right if you look at antarctica and where that line is that eight o'clock of course up here is 12 this map is the, the British topographical map. And when you zoom in on this, the way this is all laid out with the ice sheet, that would be the easiest access to the sea. That line comes out right through here, that pathway, that tunnel, whatever you want to call it, comes right into the center here. So let's assume for one minute that we are correct about the idea of there being an ancient civilization that existed down there at one time and perhaps due to some type of a change who knows they were forced underground like our government has planned for being forced underground and they were just forced to be there longer than they had planned and maybe they just continued to evolve while they were there it would then of course make sense that if 300 years went by or 400 years went by, there could have been all sorts of advancement in different parts of the globe that perhaps they would have been unaware of. Science has already established that there are heat sources down underneath that ice that make it um, t-shirt weather, basically, was the way they described it. So it would be livable, it would be habitable, and everything down there, would uh, they would have everything down there they would need to continue to exist, if not evolve. And so that would make sense. And 
I found three or four other things, brand new things, that I wanted to share with you guys. We think of pyramids in the context of deserts, in the context, of course, of Egypt, and South America to some extent, and even to a lesser extent, Asia, even here in North America. But it, you couldn't really probably pick a better way to create a structure to protect yourself from the elements if they were to ever get to the point like they are in Antarctica anywhere else on the planet. It's basically like building your own mountain. And the Sahara Desert was not always the Sahara Desert. At one time it was very lush and had rivers going through it and it was a very, very different place. This I can't believe I missed. It's I'll give you the coordinates for this. It is just about as perfect a pyramid as I have ever found. And I've looked this location up. No one else has picked this one up. This is a brand new find. And it's about as equidistant on both sides. Now, it's had some wear to it, of course. But there's pretty much no mistaking this for what it is. And down here, in the lower part of it, it almost looks like there was a smaller pyramid attached to it at one time, for some reason or another. I know this looks like just a curve, but when you zoom in on this, um, let's see if I can zoom in a little better, you can see a different triangle right here, built into the side of it, almost if it's like an entry port or a foyer. Very, very strange. And had there ever been life on the surface, there would, of course, have been evidence, and there's things that you can find if you look close enough. And here, do you see this straight white line along this mountain ridge? I have this at kind of an odd angle. You're looking at it from uh, the top of the mountain down. Let me go around this way. Do you see it now? This is clearly a mountain pathway of some kind that's just been heavily worn down over time. But it starts here and cuts right through here. Now this is Google Earth Pro. I'm sure a lot of you know this. You can't really do this with the web-based Google Earth. But there's these also these strange, and I don't know how to describe what could make pathways like this. It's kind of hard to see this one, but there's nothing mad made near it at all. So this could be just an effect of, you know, mile plus, two mile plus thick ice sheet melting at an alarming rate and opening it up, opening up access where there was none before. And the last thing I'll leave you with is something that's even harder to see. But once you see it, it's almost impossible to not see it. Now, you've got to look very close here. And I'm going to use one of the, the techniques that Google Earth Pro allows you to do, and that's kind of turn the lights down. Right here, where I have the pin, there's a 90-degree angle. Something underneath the snow has caused this part of the snow over here to be, to the left here, to be different than up here, up here, or down here. So if you can think of that, this is upper, I guess it would be left quadrant if you were looking at it um, from off to the right. I'm going to go ahead and turn those lights down and see if we can get that to show up a little better. Right here. Now, I don't know if it's a difference in the altitude, if it's lower than the rest, higher than the rest, if there's just something different under there, but there's something clearly. Now, when this opens up black here, this is just a factor of um, the shade. When you do the shading, sometimes you'll get these large black areas right here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. It's right here. 
And when you go to Google Earth Pro and you use these coordinates for yourself and you look at it, you'll be able to see it a lot easier than you're seeing it on this video. I'll turn the lights back up. So that's where I was looking at this. If we've made plans to go underground in an emergency and created structures underground, it's likely that any advanced civilization that had been living down here would have probably done the same thing. And over time, if we were not as advanced as they were, they might not have um, understood how quickly we, possess, we progressed or who knows, you know, what their uh, aims would be in having contact with us or not having contact with us. You could probably make the argument either way. Or maybe they just don't care to have contact with us one way, one way or the other, and maybe we're just trying to force the issue. That's, you know, a very hard thing to nail down. But I think that channel that goes from the ocean into the center part of Antarctica is probably part of this puzzle. That if they were going to do this, they would have needed a way in and a way out. They would have, you know, made some kind of provision to exit at some point given they didn't know how long this uh, paradigm was going to last, if there was some type of a massive pole shift that pulled that continent down there and moved everything else around. You know, that's a completely different thing, and barring any new evidence, I don't think we can make any long-term assumptions about what that means, but this for sure is a new find, and I think about as clear as evidence you can get that the people that were living here on this continent have something in common with the South American um, people that built pyramids, the African ones, the Asian ones, the North American ones, and I've even heard of some in Europe. So I guess we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.